Hi. Hello. How are you? You're so brave to say like, yeah, let's go live at, I think you're on the East Coast at 10 o'clock at night. I, I have been thinking about this for the longest time. Um, I actually still remember I had this dream like almost six months, like not even six, a couple of months ago, where like, you know, you were having the session in your home and I'm sitting there, I'm looking at everything and I'm like, her house is messy too. It's okay to have a messy home. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and I have like, you know, and ever since then I was like, you know, it would be so cool to actually just let her know how much my life and my business has changed just by listening to your podcast. Um, I still remember I had an accident back in October 2020. Um, and I was driving home from the chiropractor in December. I think it was almost near New Year's. And I don't know how I stumbled upon your podcast. And I listened to the two episodes at the end of the year where you highlight all yeah. year round like podcasts. So I was listening to it and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So ever since then, I think I have been listening to you almost every day. And if I catch up to the episodes, I go back. And then, you know, with like Rachel Hollis and Tara Strong, you know, you cry, but then it just, it just brings so much peace inside you because becoming an entrepreneur right before COVID and then going through 2020 and then still, you just have this mindset of scarcity that if you made this much today, what are you going to make tomorrow? Oh, you just got lucky. You just yeah. got lucky because you made this much. But I was just looking at my sales Excel sheet. It's still messy. And literally, when I started listening to your podcast, my average was below 2,500. Right now, it's above 5,000. The monthly you, average. A month. Yeah. And I still remember during, I always, every month, at the start of the month, I write down a number that I want the sales, like I'm, I want this many sales, God, just like bring them to me. Like I want to make this much. So last year, my total revenue was 30,000. So this year I wrote down earlier, I was like, oh, I don't, you know, 50 is going to be probably the max, but let's just write 60. And then we just hit 60,000 at the end of September. When we closed the books, it was 60,000 for the year. Um, and it's, I just it's wanted so to thank you and the love that you have been pouring out to everyone, especially when, you know, everyone is so broken. Someone is broken somewhere, you know, everything is affecting us. We have lost loved ones. We are seeing incredible amount of hurt and pain around the world and so much division which just breaks my heart and you know just listening to you it's so funny because when you introduce the insider program I was like I hardly get time now so it's okay if I listen to her you know two times a week and then last week I was literally missing listening to you every day and I was like okay I think it's about time that I join the insider club because it just like brings so much energy I just felt so lost the whole last year because I, I needed like a buddy to discuss my business problems with and I you know my sister is she works like she has a full-time job she's not an entrepreneur so you know and then the friends around me like you know it's just hard to explain you know what you're going through uh, but with you it's like different even though you know there's it's not a one-on-one -on -one thing but it's just manifesting abundance that you keep on talking about you really once you start that it really you know you God shows you the path. I still remember your interview with Alison Prince where she was like, I made God my partner. And then once you do that, you, you know, it's just, it's unlimited amount of resources that just come to you. And then, you know, we were just on a vacation with my son, um, his birthday, his sixth birthday was on Friday and we took him to Legoland, New York. And I just, 
kept on thinking how much I'm able to just give him with what I am doing and then able to give just that extra tip at restaurants or like, you know, helping the small businesses you see around yourself. It's just, it's incredible. When a woman starts making money, it's just incredible of like how many people you can touch, like, you know, how many people you can help. You know, like Maya Angelou says, become a rainbow in someone's cloud. And you can literally do that every day. Because there's always this concept, if you're a good person, you have no right to make money. There is, you know, it just, you know, it's, you are just found, you're a good person. Why would you charge? Why are you charging your friends? Why, are, you know, I don't just like give the money for free. But I still remember like, you know, many of your po podcasts state the fact that, you know, if good people have the money, then they end up helping so many people. And that's what we need. Well, I'm so filled up. That was so incredibly generous. You guys, she's the sweetest person. I said, I want to bring you on to talk about you. I don't, and she just spends the last however many minutes pouring in. means so much to me. You are so sincere. And so I really, really receive and appreciate everything you just said. And I'm a human being like all of us. And so I, I have moments when I don't feel my best. And so that made me feel like you know I don't know a zillion you are bucks. you are gifted Kathy I just I I think I have always dreamt of telling you that that God has given you so much power so much power um, and you it's just incredible the way people are following you and I bet like it's not just me it's like millions of followers who are following you who feel the same way I mean, I had trouble sleeping because I had inventory. So basically my business, this is how it works. I get inventory from Pakistan and then I have it here and then I have to sell it to me, you know, make revenue. It's sitting inventory. It's the investment. And I used to lose my sleep over how am I going to sell this? How uh, How is all of this going to happen? Because all the new entrepreneurs there, just so you know, I started with a loan from my business credit card. So wow meme is basically Arabic and Urdu letters, which means Wali and Momin, and that's the name of my two sons. So wow is W and meme is Momin. So, you know, it was supposed to be like a design website for my husband because he does like websites and he has... You know, he is an expert in multimedia design and everything. And then one day we were just sitting there and I was like, why don't we just start with something? And I still remember we just started with a credit card with a zero percent interest for 12 months. And within three years, thanks to you, I have no debt. I this whole the whole 60K was without any advertisement. Um, it's all word of mouth. I did not get PPE. So there was not an extra influx of money from anywhere. So it's just, you know, it's just finding the right person in your life and then just taking off. I mean, so thank you. <laughs> you brought me to tears and um, I, I just, you know, um, I'm just so blessed. So thank you so much for showing You're up. You're welcome. Um, you are welcome. I want to talk about the details of this incredible story. You know, it's one thing for me to bring Priyanka Chopra or Howard Schultz on the podcast and people go, right. wow, that's like in another stratosphere. But mm -hmm. I think people are equally and sometimes even more inspired to see you and you're like nine steps down the road from where they want to be. I mean, right. to think that you just come through 18 months of you know, this pandemic, and you don't have the debt, you're keeping your business growing, you doubled your business from the year before. Tell everybody what you do, because I have the luxury of having seen the beautiful things that you make, but not everybody knows what those things are. And explain a little bit about the, the clothing and the things that you sell, and then how you started to get, let's talk about even how you got your first few customers, and then what strategies you use to start being being able to sustain $5,000 a month 
bringing in the door? Connecting with people. Connecting. So the story began, I had two kids whom I did not want to leave with a babysitter. I wanted to be, you know, and then I realized that, you know, I do not have the capacity to leave the home and, you know, do a job. So, and I always, always, even in college, I worked with nonprofits. Um, and even at that time, I was like, I'm not going to waste my time for someone else. It has to be for, you know, we, there has to be a meaning for you to be here, right? And then if God has given you a heart, which feels, you know, which feels more pain, then, you know, you are blessed. So even in college, I worked with a lot of nonprofit organizations, but some of them, like, you know, you see those lavish dinners and people are just to show, you know, writing checks so they can get five minutes of stage time or 10 minutes of stage time. And all of that really was a bummer. And then I was like, you know, at the end of the day, you really need the money. There's no such thing as, you know, I'm just going to be a good person and just shine out there. You're not going to shine. There's no, you know, we don't live in that sort of world. Um, so then I got married in Pakistan. I stayed in Pakistan for a year. Uh, we started fresh. I wasn't working. My husband came here. Um, he had a background in design and um, computer science and, you know, um, so he got a job right away. And then I had my first son. Um, and then right after that, I had a gallbladder surgery. Um, huh. And then as soon as I got to, with my gallbladder surgery, I found out that I'm pregnant with my second. Mm -hmm. So they are, Wali and Momin are 20 months apart. And in that process, I gained a lot of weight. I was just, you know, I was hiding in a room. I wouldn't meet my friends just you know the person I never was and I was not happy I was it just didn't feel right and then you know thanks to my husband he always he was always there for me and it, like he's the bestest friend I have um so I still remember moment was a year and a half um and I was like well I said you do such an amazing job with like websites and design and you have you know why don't we do why don't you become a freelancer and he was like okay sure maybe we should register a company and then I was like okay and then someone suggested you know do it under your name women-owned organizations you know there's an opportunity for her too so while me LLC was you know under my name as a woman-owned organization um, then he did a couple of projects. So we needed a business account. So I went in and I still remember, she was like, do you want to get a credit card? Cause you are already pre-approved for it. And I was like, okay. And I got it. And then five months later, I still remember the same. We were just sitting in the living room and I was like, you know, I think this is the right time to start. Um, cause at that time I still remember the Pakistani rupee fell from a hundred. So basically $1 was equivalent to 135 rupees. So I was like, you know, since we earn in dollars, this is a good time for us to just start. And I still remember I made a purchase. So basically you can call me as a curator. So I take, stuff from like I take certain outfits from certain brands from Pakistan so at that time I still remember my first order from Pakistan was $750 and Kathy I cannot explain to you when the clothes came they're basically like tunics casual wear and I was just ironing them and when I ironed the first shirt and I hung it it was just you know, it just felt so good. And I thought, you know, I have so many friends and I have so many fam, so much family here. Uh, you know, this business is going to take off. Um, turns out that, you know, yes, the family support was there. The friends were still there, but my first clients were not my family and friends, you know. Um, so I started with Facebook. 
I wasn't familiar because with having kids and going through the marriage and like, you know, all the new stuff, I was really behind with social media. So I started with the, so this was 2019, April. That was my, I still remember April 19th was my launch um, of this little store in, uh, in my house. Um, and it was just like friends and family. Um, and then I, at that time, Marketplace just started. It was very new. So I started putting stuff on Marketplace. Um, and then I got my first client and she came. She didn't really, I didn't get a sale, so I was okay. The second client who came, she bought a few things and it was just, I was like, okay. So 90% of my clients now is all word of mouth, of showing them that they have something here all the way from another continent across the world where women can just come and try them on and, you know, just experience what, you know, the fa um, just the experience that is back home. Um, so the first year was great. I started, you know, one family came and then they told their, you know, um, friends and family, um, and I'm so, so thankful to those people. It's just amazing how, you know, they're God sent, basically. They just make things happen for you. So Marketplace helped me a lot at that time. I did not have a website. Um, and then COVID happened. And I live in a condo where there are a lot of old people. Um, so I could not take appointments at that time. So the entire, basically more than a year from February 2000, 2020, till March 2021, I did not take anyone in person. So I would just talk to, I still remember during Ramadan, um, I used to be up all night showing things on video conferences, like just measuring, okay, you need this, I'll do this, we'll ship it out. All me and my husband, he's shipping it out, I'm up with the two kids. Um, and then I was so happy because my first year sale was 20K. The second year, even during pandemic, it was 30,000. Um, so I pulled through and I felt, you know, I was just finally, I was not afraid of saying I'm very proud of myself. You know how we just, you always talk about it, dim the light. You know, you just have to, as women, we just cannot, you know, just openly say, okay, you know what I did? I did this. Because it's still frowned upon. You know, why is she just, everyone just wants you to dim the light. Um, so 20, and then thanks, January, I still was looking at, you know, I was just looking at the sales while I listened to you, Kathy. January sales 2021 were $1,330. My average sale now with the one customer is above seven hundred and fifty dollars. Oh it's you know, you know how you always say it's not a money problem, it's a courage problem. And once you are courageous, things started happening. And there was a lot of work because now the shipping charges are way more. DHL charges you almost it's three hundred percent more. Um, because of COVID, um, back home, things are not the same. There are lockdowns here and there. Um, but another thing that I would like to tell you is we launched our website in January with Shopify. We made it on Shopify and we launched it. With just that one website, my husband was able to get more than seven um, projects for websites. People started reaching out, some of my clients, oh, your website is so nice, who did it? And now, like, inshallah, next month, we will be launching his business as well with helping people who want to start. They don't know, I don't know what Shopify, like how it would work and the design and all of that. But he, we can help so many new people who want to start a business. Oh, my God. This is and so if you're watching this right now, you should be DMing her at wow.meemo. Is that what it is? I can't see it. It's W-O-W-M-E-E-M. 
Yeah, M E E M. That's all it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, is not only is she such an inspiration, but the fact that you have grown a business to be able to bring in sixty thousand dollars in a pandemic, where you're a curator. You're bringing in clothes from Pakistan and you are showing this to people here and you're able to bring in $60,000. I want everybody to understand what's really going on here, okay? She is a living embodiment of pure, open-hearted, loving energy. When you just step in and you let the sun hit your face and you say, here's what it is, and there isn't a part of you that's apologizing and there's not a part of you that's resistant and there's not a part of you that doesn't think you're worthy of this blessing. You just say, open palms, here I go. And you said before, you said every one of the people, those customers, you know what you called them? You called them a godsend. That's what you called them. And that's how they felt in your presence. They felt held and seen and you said, more than 90% of your business is word of mouth. And that's why. Because you didn't think about your own self and whether or not you were qualified. You were there for them. Hi, let me show you. Let me take you on this ride and journey and find things that might be right for you. Let me focus on you. I want you to feel loved. I want you to feel that this is a fun, enjoyable experience for you. And they leave and they go, I like her. She had kindness, she had presence, and of course they're gonna go tell somebody else. And what is, what do I want you all to also hear, she didn't say, so in order to do this, I said, I'm not qualified because I'm not sewing all of these items. She said, I'm in love with this clothing. This clothing represents a part of who I am. And so why do I have to make that a stumbling block? I will go find people who can make this clothing. I will then give money to those people too, right? And still I will be able to find something that's already out there that I could sell. Like how brilliant, how incredibly brilliant. And it is unbelievable that even during the pandemic you said, okay, well, let me be resourceful here. So I can't bring people into the home. And still there wasn't like a, oh, well, that's it. Throwing my hands up, you said, I'll just, you know, get on the phone with people and, and sort of like virtually take them through the inventory. And, and so what? Like you stay in integrity as if everything's good and this is your next choice and this is the next thing you're doing. And then they say, great, so this is the next thing that we're doing. It's amazing how much opportunity we miss because we decide we're in God's business. Oh, that would never work. We're in God's business. No, you don't get in that business. You stay in your business. You stay in your assignment. This is it. And I, I just, I love this example too. I mean, for you in this moment, do you have any idea you being exactly who you are, selling exactly what you sell, being from Pakistan, do you know what it does for people to hear your story? Do you know what it does on so many levels that you, who you are, as you are, are this person? Like, it is so important. And like you said, with women, we dim our light. And I just did a post about that yesterday because Priyanka Chopra said to me, she said, I can't stand this patriarchy where women cut each other down almost. It's like, instead of saying, hey, sister, like, I'm so inspired by you. It's like, oh, who does she think she is? No, we have to look at people like you and any woman who has the, the class and the courage to show up and say, thank you. I wanna give you praise. I wanna give you a compliment. You know what? You're paving the way that this is possible for me too, right? Instead of dimming your light, there's no reason to do that, right? There's no reason at all. So it's just incredible. And I have no doubt that this is literally the, the precursor to how much success you're gonna have. I mean, it's just gonna be, there is no end. There is no end because your energy thank is- you. We're working with God's energy. It's infinite. It's unending, right? Love has no limit, right? Love so when no limit. Space, um, it's going to be so exciting to see where that creativity hits you next and what your next inclination is and what to try and how to continue to expand this. What is, um, 
what's your what's your next vision that you can see like what would be the most delicious dreamy scenario for you with this business um so recently i have to share this with you there's a local organization which who have she is my client as well and she reached out to me and she was like she i always donated money with like small causes back home or here whoever so then there we talked she told told me about the school um it's basically on the border near china so it's kind of secluded so it's mm-hmm. in hunza valley so hunza valley is a part of pakistan where the literacy rate is 100% the only part of pakistan where the literacy rate is 100% but this school in particular is part of the valley but it's secluded so they wanted and there were only 43 children um some sort of less than 50 so they needed help cuz if they didn't have enough funds they would have to ship their students to a school which was almost 5 kilometers of a walk for back and forth would be 10 kilometers a day for an elementary student. Oh um, so I was like, you know, why don't we do raffle tickets on some of my stuff? So I had these four scarves that were just sitting there. I never took pictures of them. Um, they came during COVID. So I kind of never, no one really saw them. um and then i gave them to her and i was like why don't you just wear them and take pictures and you know we can just do raffle so i think it was 20 25 $25 for raffle tickets we ended up with $2000 that paid for 8 months of that school to sustain and my ultimate goal even when i started this business this i was like you know you have to help me enable people god you have to help me um and i am able to provide so much back home there are at least three women who have never worked in their life and then now they're working full time with me and it brings me such joy to see the changes in their lives so i think the next step the ultimate dream is nice. valmim foundation which you know we are which works globally and makes all of us global citizens rather than just being divided all over um you know when this whole afghanistan thing happened kathy i could not sleep for a week or so yeah and i would just cry and the only thing as women or as like you know a human you have we need that power and that power has to be with the resources and the capabilities and we just have to put ourselves out there i am so blessed i asked you hey we were dming i said you should come on we should talk about your business and instead this is one of the most powerful and meaningful conversations i have ever had and what a how god supersizes your plans um i i'm so we're so lucky blessed that you're having this dialogue that you of all people is saying this to us and it reminds me when you just told that incredible story about raffling off those tickets and being able to make $2000 with sustained a school for 8 months i want everyone to really get this how we so often almost every day we overestimate how high the mountain is to climb so what do we do nothing right and when all those images were pouring in you know thank god we now live in a everything's a local call cuz everything's on social right 100 years ago you wouldn't have seen in your face what was happening in afghanistan but now we saw it we saw it right but then people who feel so upset about it say there's no, there's nothing i can do it's so overwhelming like what can i possibly do and there and this is the case with so many issues right so many things and instead of doing that what can we learn from what you just said about that school it made a difference for those 8 months for those kids right your business is making a difference for those three women in in pakistan right that matters that matters 
a great deal. Every person is a world. Every person is a world. So think about, right? If each of us could really take these words to heart, okay, and say to yourself, what could I do? One little thing could I do that could actually equal helping a small, a small amount, but it's actually significant. It reminds me of the story. We've all heard that story about the starfish washed up on the ocean, and this man is throwing the starfish in, and there's thousands of them. And this fisherman comes along and he says, what are you doing? You're never going to get all these starfish. They're dying. There's thousands of them. And he picks up one more, and he throws it, and he goes, well, it mattered for that one, right? For that one, it mattered. Exactly. And I just, I, I'm just, my, I mean, I'm, my mind is blown what a simple individual can do, right? You're not saying, here's what's amazing. This is how generous your, your spirit is. You're not saying, well, once I make $100,000, I plan to give 10% of it. You know, once I make a million dollars, it's like, oh my God, God, use me, right? That's what you just said. I ask all the time. Help me enable somebody else. Help me let my life be a life of purpose, right? Let my life, let me walk in that way. And when you do that, oh my God, you are so blessed. You don't have to worry about chasing Facebook ads and advertising. It's coming right to you because you are standing in that place of generosity. So I can't really say enough about how unbelievably important this is. And I'm curious, because you did lose sleep all of those nights, do you have any thoughts that you could share, like one thing that you think people could do, or like one thing you're thinking of working on that you think that people could say, oh, all right, that helps me take away the overwhelm and just focus on one way that I could help? I think once again, like you said, help one family if you can I have a best friend who is from um, Afghanistan and I'm in touch with her Um, it's just I I was I called her and the best thing I can do is just be there for her right now but then it just starts with the smallest thing if you can just even if you I know it's I think the Western Union is still you cannot transfer money to Afghanistan at this point. I have no, I, I'm not sure on this. Um, but just like you said, one person is the world. So all you have to think, if we all think about just one family, one person, just even if you can just provide transportation for them to, you know, from their home to school or just, enable one woman to just work from home if she does you know my ultimate goal would be i would love to hire someone in afghanistan who would just make anything for me she can make a scarf she can just any product that she can make for this me. is it this is it what you just said right. if we can help women in afghanistan work from home right now think about what you just said hire somebody give them a job, let them be able to find a whole world that lights them up, that they can be paid to be home. Like that is huge what you just said. And you know what else is huge? You just being here telling your story because Mr. Rogers has that incredible quote about how there's nobody you wouldn't love once you heard their story. And I think that we have this garbage thing called the media It's just such garbage. It's just like a constant adrenaline fear machine. And that divisiveness you talked about is because we are not getting to know people, right? Human beings, individuals, their stories. You know, it was so brilliant in the movie Schindler's List because Steven Spielberg wanted to show, right, the atrocity of the Holocaust, right? And it's hard to understand a number, right? Six million people, you're like, I can't even fathom that. That's more than how many stadiums filled, right? So it's a a movie in black and white. And there's one moment where there's a little girl in a red jacket and the rest of the movie is black and white. And so then you see this little girl with a red jacket. And later in the movie, you see that red jacket in a pile of jackets. And you know, that means that she was killed. 
And that was so brilliant because it told one person's story. Because if you just see people as numbers, if you just read headlines, you miss it. You don't feel it. You don't get it. And if people started to hear just one person, whoever the person is, a teacher, a mother, a father, a son, a person, any person from all over the world, stories should be told. This is why I do love podcasting. This is why I do love using the technology we have to have these conversations. And gosh, like I said, I didn't know this would be this delicious and this expansive of a level, but you have no idea. I would, I would love to encourage you to understand that for every dollar you've made, by giving people such love and grace in your business, there is literally a line of people who just want to hear about you, how you are you and what you do. Your story alone, I want you to know, is so much more powerful than you could possibly know because of who you are, because of how you see the world, because of the goodness because of the lenses of compassion. We live in such an empathy deficit and people are so quick to put every person in a box and think that they know, and then to tune out, right? Ugh, there's too many problems in the world. There's, you know, there's problems in Afghanistan. There's also problems in the ocean. There's, forget it, I'm not doing anything, right? And you are literally a, a stand for so much of what we actually need to take one step forward in the right direction. Thank you, Kathy. And I just, since you talked about media, and I just want everyone, um, if you go to my page, you will see I just, the 60K came from just above 300 followers. I just got 350 followers on Instagram. So do not, when you look around and you see all these influencers with 10,000, oh, I need the swipe up, you know, I need this, I have, I think a little over 1,500 followers on Facebook. And then I have 350 some followers on Instagram. So all these new entrepreneurs or, you know, just don't, just don't look anywhere else. This would be my advice to you. Believe in yourself and believe in the power of people. There are such great people around this world. Just start with anything and you can make abundance of love and courage and happiness and just changing the world around you it's i never thought it would i always was like you know when i lose the weight and i look perfect then right. that's the time to show up in front of the people um i still remember you know being so scared and Thanks to you, Kathy, I would, you know, when you always talk about price tags and 7-Eleven coffee versus Starbucks coffee, I used to sweat when I used to tell prices, when I was like, is this, you know, who am I to charge this? And this really happens. You are thinking in the back of the mind, who, am I really worth, is this really worth it? Is this going to be, you know, with the kids, there are times when you, you know, I still remember during Eid season, there was this, you know, um, item that need to be sent in. It had a tassel on it and my son just pulled it and that was the only article I had. And then I still remember going to the bathroom and just crying and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? And I just held the tassel in my hand. You are not going to believe this. I just held the tassel in my hand and I just prayed. I was like, this just fix it alamia just fix it just do it and i opened it and i like just and it was fine and i shipped it and there were no complaints and this is you know just for whoever is listening just believe it if i can do it anyone can do it i mean that's you don't need the money you don't need the influence you don't even need to go live every day, even though I encourage it. I still deal with that dilemma. Okay, I don't look that good. So I cannot, you know, be, this is my first time being live ever on Instagram or anywhere else. Um, so 
you know, it just, but I really wanted to thank you. And that's why I would, you have no idea how my life has changed. And probably all my family, all my friends probably know you because I talk about you so much. Um, so it's just, you know, it, this is you. See how you have just changed the Aww. life and the way of my business and all those people that I'm helping. Um, oh I just thank cannot thank you enough. I receive it. And it is just like the purest, sweetest nectar from heaven. It's so pure and so sweet. And I want you all to hear what she just said, that she was able to make $60,000 with 300, not 300,000, not 30,000, not 3,000, 300 followers. And it's like, again, how much time do we spend with these limiting beliefs? There's nobody out there. No one will buy it. They won't like the price. I'm not, I don't look right, whatever it is. And you just said something also so important. You said there's so many good people out there, right? It's like you look for the helpers, you look for the abundance and boy, will you find it, right? You will find evidence of whatever it is that you tell yourself is so. So if you say to yourself, you know what? I'm on a mission. I love these articles of clothing. I want to employ women in Pakistan and I'm going to make this happen. And there's going to be buyers and I'm going to treat them like they are a godsend because they are. And I'm going to make sure that they feel how much I care that they get this value. I'm then going to charge what is worth so that I can be generous to the customer, right? So I don't have to cut costs. So I can be customer to employing these three women in Pakistan. So I can be generous to my family. So I can be standing here right now and be an inspiration to all these other people. Do you see how money creates more abundance? Yes. So you're right. You know, you can do it with anything. And she said, you don't even need to be going live all the time. I think it's that full embodiment of this is what I'm doing. And I... I'm going also when you just said like you prayed, you went in the bathroom and you're like, oh, please, God, make this work. Right. How often is that the last thing we think to do to just like offer up some kind of a prayer? Like we are mostly not physical. Right. We look like we are, but it's like we are connected to something so much bigger, you know, like get in alignment with that flow state with your true self. Right. Be connected. And it's amazing how people will want to then be connected to you. They just want to get up close next to you. They want that around them. I'm curious when you said that you were like shaking when you were talking about the pricing, like what's one of your, your more expensive pieces of clothing? How much is, the, is one of the more expensive pieces? So the majority is between 35 to $65. Um, and then the formal outfits, the most expensive one I think I have right now is $320. Now, what are the more popular sellers? Like, what are the best sellers? The casual. The casual 45 to 65. So the idea of this whole business started when it was my cousin's wedding. And, and it happened all of a sudden. So we were like, okay, I was thinking to myself, you know, this time, I'm just going to try the clothes. I'll just buy it here. No matter how much I have to pay, I'll just buy the outfit here. Turns out you go there and then nothing is below 800 or $900. And everything is small and medium. It's like large and extra large people are non-existent. So right now, most of my inventory, and that's how people started coming because I had extra large and I had extra, extra large. And my and if someone came to buy one thing they bought three things so even still now now that i have started to take appointments my in person sales are way higher than my online sales because when the customer is right there in the room with you and they see your selection and they see that okay the prices are reasonable rather than buy, buying one thing they'll buy three things um, and then mostly what people have appreciated it is these are not replicas. These are not, you know, low qualities. They are from the original brand 
and I don't put my name on it. I just affiliate myself with that. Um, and even on my website, it would say each and every brand. It's not like I put my name on it and I'm selling it. So I think people appreciate that honesty. And mostly, I don't know how, it was basically every price was a secret. So if you came in with a Louis Vuitton bag, then you know the price for your shirt would be 95. But then right. if you just walked in, however, like, you know, like a mother of toddlers looks, then maybe they'll bring down the price for you. So I was just not comfortable with that dishonesty. So I just, you know, it was a new thing in the Pakistani boutique style. So that I, I posted my prices on Facebook. Everything was so a lot of people, all those. So it, I just saved me for all those DMs. What's the price? What is this? It's just the price was on there. And this yeah. is the price. And I use, and people used to negotiate. And I used to, you know, be like, okay, okay, they if let them just buy it. And then but like, after listening to you and gaining that confidence, I'm like, this is the price. Yeah. That's what I'm charging. If I am taking time and energy away from my family, then I better get paid for it. And if you're receiving something all the way from another continent during the pandemic, then this has to be worth it. A hundred percent. And honestly, what you do is so much more than just selling a product because you do a service. You know, you're walking people through the boutique, you're doing things. You could probably, you know, add other aspects of revenue because there can be like a styling fee too, you know, cause it's not mm -hmm. just people come in, there's like 15, 20 minutes, sometimes probably an hour. I can tell what kind of person you are, but there's a whole level of like, that's concierge service. That's not the way most of us go to buy clothes. Right. And there might be some people who they get that for free when they come and buy the first time. And then you say, Hey, you know, if you want to do this, I can put you on a VIP list. I can call you when new things come in. I can set things aside for you. And I can, I can be working with you throughout the course of the year. Like I'm just planting that seed. Another thing is I'm just thinking is utilizing if you are now, we sort of like had this breakthrough tonight with you coming live for the first time. If this is something that you might consider doing, even if it's just once a month to just show the new items and then say, hey, you know, I have spots right now for five concierge appointments where I can take you through the whole boutique, you can DM me, right? And then even if those people don't live locally, you could get on Zoom with them, say hello, and then walk them through all of the different pieces. That just seems like such a no brainer. I bet that there are people on this call right now, type a one in the chat if you're like, yeah, I'd love to see what she has. What does she have? You guys should look at her stuff, it's gorgeous. Look at all the hearts you're getting. Um, and then the other thing I thought is, what if there are people in different cities who could work alongside of you, right? Who could then be representative of, of helping you to sell this clothing as well? Look, you're already get. do you see the people who are putting ones in the chat? This is awesome. So do you see? Yeah. So we need to actually, you know me, I'm into doing and taking the action. So I want all of you, you know, that she is not just selling this beautiful clothing. She's also on a mission to help women and to help people wherever she can. Take the initiative, DM her that you typed a one tonight. And that's one thing you can do also, right? For the goodness of the world, support her. Support her, being her, doing her, helping other people in this world. Look at that. You know, that's so beautiful, you guys, that you're that supportive. I love seeing that. But yeah, I think that there are ways that now that you have such a strong foundation that you could scale this business and probably triple it, you know, but those that would just have to feel right to you. Right. I already have the clients, the VIP clients who get the first calls. So which I didn't really think of, but it started on that level. So sometimes now I know the clients. So if something comes, I'll be like, oh, look, if someone wears a plus size, oh, look, there's something that is a plus size, would you be interested? And sometimes the items don't even go up on Instagram. They are sold just with that one text message. Yeah. 
Uh, but this idea of like collaborating with other um, people in other states, because I was thinking of pop-up shops, but with the kids, I really want to be always there for my kids as well. But a pop-up shop is always, you know, I have been thinking about it, but just not, it's just not, you know, I just need to figure it out. But if anyone wants to collaborate or, you know, if I can help in any way or they can help me in any way, I would love to do and a I collaboration as well. I think you're sitting on a, what can become like a million dollar business pretty much overnight because who you are, your story and the clothing is so beautiful. So the product, the person, right? It all sort of works and the story, right? And, and in this moment, I think that people are so aware and longing to show representation, to show diversity and to support, right? Um, so I think that this is actually doing a huge service beyond just the clothing. I think that it's important for this to be something that you really lean into in, in every way possible, which is why I would encourage you to go live once a month and to do that. And the other thing I was thinking is that for every person who you said already it's word of mouth, I don't know if you already do this, but I might be so bold as to say, I really enjoyed having this connection with you. I'm so glad that you were satisfied. Thank you for referring your friend. You know, it would mean so much to me if you wrote a little testimonial and just mm -hmm. wrote a few and maybe shared it, you know, share it on your social, share it on your Facebook, share it with five friends. And if they share it and you hear about them, that they referred somebody, maybe you give them something like a scarf, or maybe you give them something little, you know, just to say thank you, because I think you could really capitalize. I'd love to see all those people who are mm -hmm. talking about you right now, who are so grateful that you exist to just, I'd love to keep all of those testimonials so that you can mm -hmm. utilize them because it's amazing how other people sell our stuff better than we ever could. Right. Right. Um, it's a buyer's market. And so to hear from other buyers, what their experience was, it's just so important. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think my last idea for you was a membership where you have somebody who comes in, has an amazing experience. They, you know, they, they buy more than they thought they were coming in for. And you say, just so you know, I have an offer where for you make it up $50 a month, right? You get one new article of clothing and it's always a surprise. Sometimes it's a shirt. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that, sometimes it's a belt. Sometimes... Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of like this fun way for them to stay connected to who they are, to what they really care about. And it's an insurance policy, like, oh, instead of losing myself in this other culture, mm -hmm. right, and being swallowed right. up, I'm going to, this is going to keep me connected to, to this mm -hmm. part of me. And every month I get something and then they can either keep it or they can give it away or, but it's just a nice thing that also could add, imagine if everybody comes in, they came for one item, they wind up buying three items and then they sign up for a membership and it's $50 a month and it's reoccurring revenue and there's a new item and you ship it and that's already pre-sold. I mean, think of that, how that could add to everything you're doing. Yeah, that would be amazing. That's a great idea. And I would like to, you know, you, Kathy, or anyone else who's listening right now, um, they can DM me and if they want to do raffle, for any of the organizations, I mean, even you, Kathy, you can, I would love to send the stuff for free. I have beautiful scarves, like whatever items. I want to do it. Let's just, let's just do it. You know, anyone and, you know, it would be a pleasure from me and it's a gift from me and we'll just do, just, you know, I'm here. And if anyone just DM me, and I'll send you a couple of things and you can do raffle on it. And, you know, let's just help our favorite charities or our favorite organizations or our favorite human being. The world in, is in so much pain. And this is the least we can do. You guys, it's 11 o'clock on the East Coast where she is. <laughs> and, um, we're going to sign off, but... How incredible was this conversation, right? And I remember when you first 
DM me. Do you remember what you said to me? I still remember. I still, he, I can never get over that message. I just, you know, I wish the division between Muslim and Jewish and Hindus and whatever. I just hope in our lifetime we get to see that there are no more divisions left. The world, we are just getting divided by the day. Politics, now it's the vaccine. People, you know, the first question they ask, are you vaccinated? And if you're not, then, you know, that's a whole different story. And if you are, then you belong to a certain, you know, political side. And then, you know, if you say something about, you know, um, Afghanistan or, you know, Palestine and Israel issue, it just... It's incredible the way the divisions are taking place. And it makes my heart so sad to see the type of world our children are going up in. It's mm -hmm. nothing like what we grew up in. Yeah, it is, it's, it's being divided by the hour. If that's the least to say. And the light, smallest thing, this is what puts me to sleep because I keep on thinking about, you know, what could be done? What, how many people have lost jobs because of COVID? How many people have lost loved ones? You know, I myself have, you know, we have lost so many people in the past two years that it's just so ha hard to be happy anymore. And I think the only thing that brings so much joy to my heart is to see just because of two or three things from wow me that I have gifted to someone else so many lives have changed and we can all and whoever you know if there's anything that I can you know donate on my part I would you just gave that's so the asset that I have that's the asset that I have right now to give you just gave so much and I'll never forget that first DM you sent me a while back and you're like, hey, Kathy, this is one of your followers who loves you so much. Like, I am Muslim and you have no idea how Allah has like blessed you. And, you know, here I am, this very proud, open hearted, vulnerable Jewish girl. And the two of us are, you know why the division is so crazy? Because we're all one. And we're all on the same side. It's called love, right? We right. all on the side of, I want to feel connected to love. And I want you to feel connected to love. And we meet in that vibration. And it's the most ridiculous thing. Because if you took off our exterior or the narrative of our ego, there's this one collective soul consciousness, right? Which constantly, we're just energy walking in the room. That energy affects everybody else. We're constantly pools of con bump bumping up against each other. And it's just the weirdest thing how we divide ourselves by what we look like and what words we call what, you know. God is sitting there like, it's one love, one source, like, it's unbelievable how the ego gets involved in all of this. It's just so fascinating. Um, but I think tonight you did so much good. You took the most beautiful key and unlocked so many hearts and put in there so much love and so much nurturing. And God is just going to keep blessing you for being who you are, for radiating such goodness. And I'm so blessed. I said, yeah, let's hop on. Let's talk about your business. <laughs> and um, instead, we talked about your real business, which is making this world so much better. Just being you. And anyone who's listening just knows none of this is exaggerated. You're just, um, you're just giving so much. And you opened such a door tonight to such a portal where we can all actually meet. It's called Let's Just Meet in Love. Let's just meet where we all can actually be connected as we are which feels good because it's the truth. So everybody do what you can to go follow her at wow.meme. Look at her beautiful stuff, um, reach out to her. And I think that's an amazing idea if you want to raffle something off. She just says she raffled off a scarf. They wound up getting $25 tickets, added up to $2,000. It sustained a school for eight months. So I think we can do a whole lot of good tonight and you're such an inspiration. Thank you so Thank much. You.
Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. God bless you. Sleep well. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.